Hey, what's up? This is Paul Soltz from Super Easy Apps. I'm going to do another sort of tutorial. I'm not going to type it out for you. I just want to go over it. I spent a lot of time on this today. Like I got 90% of the way there and then I couldn't get what I wanted to work to work. <laughs> so let's talk about that. All right. So I'm working on this presentation app and I'm looking at just presenting some stuff from a markdown file. And so I got that working yesterday. And today I just wanted to get notifications so that I could move on with it. And I had issues where um, the notifications were not clicking properly and, and weren't behaving properly. And it took forever to figure it out. Now I was using ChatGPT to sort of assist with some of this. This is all code I've, I've written sort of before with all the window level stuff with NS panel because that's what you need to use in this scenario. If you want to show something full screen on the whole screen, then we need to use NS panel. And I wanted it to time out after about 10 seconds because basically what I want to do is I want to be able to present a topic, have a headline or heading appear on screen, have it so that I could click on it to dismiss it or have it auto time out after a set number of seconds, which I'm defaulting right now to 10 seconds so that it gives me time to talk about the concept so that you can see the concept is a royal pain in the butt. So let's see what my test app looks like. Um, this is a test notification and I've just got like, it really pared down to just the essence of what was going on here because it just was not working and I was batting my head around it. And I think ChatGPT sent me down the wrong rabbit hole. And that's one of the things that you have to be mindful of when the, you use it is it's not always gonna suggest correct things and you still have to research some of the stuff. So if we click this button, it's gonna show us a full screen notification. Now just for fun, I put an extra close button in here because initially I had no um, tap gestures working. So that I had two challenges today. I could not for the life of me figure out how to get tap gestures or click gestures to work on Mac OS. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but that was my, one of my problems. The other problem is I could not get this so that I could interact with content behind it. I wanted to be able to still use the computer while a notification is on screen. I didn't want it to take over and then I wanted it to sort of disappear. So these are the types of transitions that you could do in something like After Effects or I guess Premiere or Final Cut Pro or ScreenFlow or whatever editing software you're using. And I just don't want to do all that because I just want to do it live. So I want it to appear. And then if I need to dismiss it because it's in the way, I want to be able to click on it and like be like, go, go away. <laughs> and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So what we have here is an NS panel. So if you want to do something like this on Mac OS, you can't, I don't think there's a way to use Swift UI. Maybe that'll change with WWDC 2024 on Monday or next week. Right now you can't seem to do some of these things um, and have full customization. So you really need to drop back to UI kit to work with NS panel directly. And so we want to do a floating panel collection behavior can join all spaces allows us to work um, across screen. So this is super cool. I can go to this screen and it's here. I can go to this screen and it's here. And um, I can enter a full screen app and it will reappear and then it'll time out once it hits that 10 second mark. And that's pretty cool. Ignore cycle is another handy one. So like a lot of times when you have something like this, you don't want it to cycle. So like you don't want to see it here. Um, if I'm tabbing between things, you really don't want to see this um, in other places. So like stuff like that, I think that's what that does. I could be totally wrong. Yeah, you can't cycle through it as a window. And that makes sense. I, if if anything, I want you to cycle between this and not the full screen panel thing because it's not something that I want happening. Um, for a panel, you typically don't set it to be released when it's closed. Uh, I don't want it to be movable. It's not going to be opaque, so I want it to be transparent. Uh, I don't want a shadow. And the really important part is this window needs to be clear. If it's not clear, then I don't get passed through click. And that's really important for the mouse interaction. And then we just create a content view with the content rack. 
which is going to be coming in as an initializer for this, and we'll grab the main screen for that. Doing layer backing views in in AppKit, and then again setting that layer that we're creating right now to make sure it's clear. If it's not clear, then your clicks don't go through um, with a default behavior, and, and it's I don't know how much time I probably spent. <laughs> two hours on this. It was just insane. Sometimes like you can't find anything online and I tried chat GPT to help me. I think eventually it sort of tipped me off, it, but it had given me bad code to use. So um, there was just one property that was terrible. All right, so I have how to do a button. Um, I did this because I wasn't sure how... Uh, to do SF symbols in Mac. I haven't done that in a long time. I don't think I've used any SF symbols recently. Well, actually, I might have, um, but it was it's still new to me, so I wanted to play around with that API, creating a button. For the longest time, the auto-completions was not giving me... I tried having a sender parameter, and I ended up not using it because that also threw me down a rabbit hole. It was defaulting the parameter to nil or no, or I guess it would be false in Swift. Um, and I wasn't expecting that because I had a default parameter for that. So, and, and I didn't see a new API when I looked quickly on creating this button of using the new action stuff. So I don't know if that's propagated or if I'm just looking in the wrong spot. I made it circular because I wanted to play with that. It's got a layer, corner radius, and it masks the bounds. Um, next up, I created a label and this is just a label with text. What I didn't realize, um, it's been a while again, since I've done Mac development and doing UI kit stuff, is that if you want to label, it's NS text field. And then that presented additional problems. So is editable and is selectable are two properties that you need to make sure are set to false if you want to add a tap gesture, because otherwise it's going to consume all that, that tap input. And so when you're seeing this full thing, this is the bounds of the message label is a NS text field. It will consume all of the touch input in here. And so I added a tap gesture or a click gesture to make it dismiss. And that never got triggered because the editability and the selectability was consuming all the touch input. Okay. And then it's important for the message label to be clear so that we can see the background. You might be able to do the all in one, um, but if you want to have like components sort of structured, I think having a message container makes sense. So then I did a NS view. ChatGPT was telling me that I needed to use a like a touch custom formatting thing, and that was not working either. Um, so I took that out uh, for like a pass view view. I, I don't think the the hitbox detection stuff that it gave me was proper. So something wasn't working properly, or there was a second method that I need to implement that it wasn't cluing me into. And so this is where I set a background color. I want a solid color. I don't, it was giving me transparent. I don't want to see the background because I want to focus on the content for this uh, feature, but you might want to see some of the background or you might want to blur and do fancy effects. That's something that you could do. Um, initially it gave me frame based layout and I wanted auto layout constraints. So I asked it to give me those and then I tweaked them a bit. Um, I wanted to be able to control the padding. So like here I can just do 80 rerun it and then see what that looks like with 80 padding. And I could play with the font sizes just to make sure everything feels good. And then I could click on it and I swear sometimes it doesn't disappear. So that's really interesting. Okay, so if I'm in Xcode and I tap here, okay, now it went away. I don't know if I'm still focused on the app, so the app's in the menu bar. Seems to have a bit of a delay there. Did I change the timeout? It should be three seconds, or sorry, 0.3 seconds. So those are my auto layout constraints. Um, and then the click gesture recognizer. It would be super simple if I knew how to do this and I had to learn the hard way again. Uh, and it always feels like it's difficult with Swift and autocompletes are terrible for this. If you type 
I wanted to type, uh, what is it, hide? What did I call it? Uh, do I still have that method here? Let's just go with something that takes a parameter. So this show method, if I wanted to type this show animated, like that's useless. You can't, you can't do that. And so then I do animated but I have to get rid of the parameter for this to work and then it can't find it. And then I have to give it another parameter duration. And then this one's not exposed to objective C. So let's expose it just for demo purposes. Um, parameter two cannot be exposed. Awesome. Um, so that's going to break things, but, um, the autocomplete just doesn't work. And that's the most frustrating thing when you're writing this, like you have to know how to do some of this and it has to be like muscle memory because you can't always trust the, the compiler or autocomplete to help you. So I need to call the close panel method and That's not gonna work like that, but it's gonna work like that. So taking away those two things that it automatically suggested. So that's like the confusing part of working with Swift and auto completion. I probably should know better, but uh, I don't do this all the time, creating new buttons and gestures in Mac. Okay, so that is the click gesture uh, hopefully that saves you some time if you're doing anything like that. And then animation was super nice. Um, so here I'm going to order front. This is not going to make it a key window. So that's the other thing is that when we're working with panels like this, you don't want them to be key windows. Like this is a key window right now. You can tell because the title is up in the top. And if I click on Xcode, Xcode becomes the key window. Um, but if we go back to this app, I want this to be key window when I'm using it, but if I'm just demoing like the notification, I want to be able to click behind it and I want to use different apps and do different things. And clicking on this should not activate the app. So we see Xcode still activated. I can still scroll up and down and it's going to close when I click on it. So that is That's really important is that you're using order front and not order front and make key because this is a panel. Um, then for animation, I'm doing a run animation group with a context, setting the duration, the timing function. I don't know if this supports um, Spring. Like I don't know if Spring exists on this API. So that was one thing I wasn't sure about. But that's something that you could look up. Um, so I'm just going with the ease in, ease out and then setting the alpha value. So we start with the alpha set to zero on initialization, and then in here we set it to one over a 0.3 second duration. And then if duration is set, which it's a default parameter, then I will fade out after 10 seconds. And so that's what I have hooked up here. If you turn off animation, then we just set the alpha value to one and uh, then there's still going to be a close with fade out animation, though I actually I don't have a way to disable um, the animation here. So ideally you would pass in false here and then I would propagate that over here. But this was just a simple test, so I didn't do all of the bells and whistles. I just wanted it to work with the clicks. Um, that's our selector method. Uh, and then what do we have down here? So then I just created like a shared object that's gonna be able to be presented and it gets created if it's nil, we show something. Um, and then if it's not created yet, hiding it won't do anything. And if it is, then we can fade it out. So that's how to get started. And then this is calling all of this from Swift UI. So a button on screen that just will call this show notification and it will trigger all the logic for you. So if you need to make a Mac app that presents something, 
um, that's how you do it. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and comment down below if uh, any of those landmine problems that I ran into have affected you or if you've gotten stuck on something silly. Um, yeah. And then lastly, uh, so up here, what ChatGPT told me that you should never set if you want this to work is it had recommended um, mouse, ignores mouse events. This is a Boolean value that indicates whether the window is transparent to mouse events. For whatever reason, and maybe it's going to behave differently right now. Let's, let's test it out. If I set this to either true or false, everything doesn't work like I want it to. So let's see if that's still true. So I click here. I can select stuff. I cannot tap this. So that's what we'd expect. It's ignoring mouse events. And sometimes you want that behavior. But if you want this to click and disappear, then let's set it to false. And so they initially set it to true in their example. I was like, yeah, that's not what I want. And so clicking that, OK, we closed. So that worked. But the other test I have to do is, uh, sorry, click here, click out. Can I select? No, I cannot select. This is ridiculous. Um, I can't do anything uh, except it auto closes. So setting this property to either of these values um, totally breaks some other uh, behavior. And that's what's frustrating about some of these APIs. And maybe that's just a Macism is that false or true or not setting it, like those don't really make sense to me. Um, that's three different th values. You either use it you and you set it to false or you set it to true. But then there's this other one where if you ever set it, then it loses some implicit behavior or it's changed something. And so the, the only thing I saw here was the value of this property is true when the window is transparent to mouse events, otherwise false. So I don't know if you're supposed to set this or not, except if you want to set it to true, because setting it to false doesn't seem to work. If I take this out, yep. Yeah. Let's try again. We click the button. We click out here. I can do all this selection. I click this, and it goes away. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, maybe you know more about this ignores mouse events, and you want to comment down below, because I'd love to understand why there's three different states here when to me, it would only make sense that false or true actually do something. Um, but if there's other APIs like this, maybe that's why I'm so frustrated with Mac development sometimes for panels and windows is because potentially setting properties breaks other behavior that you expect works. Cause like, I swear I had everything working. I must've commented this line in and then it didn't work for like an hour and I couldn't figure it out. So I started a new project. And then I finally isolated it to this. So that's that's my life as a, a Mac developer right now. And if you have similar experiences, um, I hope you can figure them out and maybe leverage ChatGPT to help, but also be aware that certain APIs might bite you. And ChatGPT doesn't always think about the code like these two. I had to figure that out. It didn't suggest that. But maybe with a better prompt, I could have avoided that. I don't know. These are, when I'm prototyping, I don't always know which direction I'm going. I'm just sort of iterating and, and making tweaks. So I'll see you in the next video. Um, hopefully it's going to be about keyboard shortcuts or, or somewhat close because I think I'm a, a lot closer with this to actually be functional for my next video.